So why is this talk about Struts 2 and not any other Java framework? This is the reason. Uh, Struts is very unique. It has a very unique situation. Let's take a look at it. This is the table of CVEs divided by a CVE type. And as you can see, Struts has 24 uh, code execution vulnerabilities that kept up popping up every year, several uh, vulnerabilities per year. Uh, I would love to thank all the researchers who found these vulnerabilities because without their work, my research won't be possible. So, why? Why is Strut so explosive? Why does it have this persistent vulnerability that pops up every year and everybody knows about Struts because of the vulnerabilities now, not because it's a very cool framework? The, the answer lies in Struts internals. The keystone of Struts is the value stack. Value stack is an object get, that contains other objects. For example, all the dates, all the application settings, uh, all the security settings, pretty much everything. So the framework uses OGNL to manipulate uh, objects inside the value stack. OGNL it stands for Object, Object Graph Navigation Language. It's a Java uh, it's Java native expression language that allows you to manipulate objects, Java objects, pretty much any way you like. So after you've heard about OGNL, actually all of these code execution that I've shown you before are RCEs, remote code executions, via OGNL injections. Uh, I took the security bulletins that was provided by Struts developers, and as you can see, there is a spike in 2013 and 16, there are six vulnerabilities per year, and then we see less. But uh, don't think that it's over, because we may see new ones in 2019 or 20, because the root cause of these vulnerabilities is still there. Uh, now let's take a look how Struts works with OGNL and how it evaluates the OGNL expression the right way. So first, on the top of the pyramid, there is something that calls the evaluation. I'll show you examples on the next slide. This call goes to the, to the implementation of OGNL library made by Struts developers. And from security point of view, a very important thing that this security mechanism, it's part of implementation that uh, Struts developers made. And then call, call goes to the raw OGNL, to the native library, and it's evaluated in the native library. Let's take a look at each part of the pyramid at a time. Uh, these are examples of views that I use in struts. I've taken struts tag, they are in purple, as column property, and the tag is used to get the data from session username. So this is the OJNO expression, they are in orange. View takes an OJNO expression, uh, then it takes the data from the model using OJNL expression and it populates view with data. So in the end, you will see hello username instead of this horrible construction. This is the uh, most common case how OJNL is used inside struts. Now let's go to the bottom of the pyramid and let's take a look how raw OJNL works. I've taken get value method of OJNL library and I feed two arguments to that, an OJNO expression and the context class that I will manipulate with these expressions. So what can I do with these uh, OJNO expressions? Let's take a look. This is the class that I used as a context. You may not read all the code. Everything you need to know is just it has several variables and the method. The method populates variables and prints them to the console. So. I run get value using print all. This is the name of the method. What I get, get the values populated and printed to the console. But what if instead of using the uh, method of the class, I use an arbitrary constructor? I've taken process builder, I feed calc exe to it and start it. As ex and as expected, we say calc. Because OGNL. Raw OJNL doesn't really care what to evaluate. 
just takes the expression and gives you the result. Uh, so what do you need to pop up calc inside struts2? You need to pass through several steps in the pyramid. Uh, first, you need to find the top spot, the evaluation point, but this time you need to find piece in the piece of code that will take your is user input and evaluate it as the OGNO expression. Then, when you find it, you uh, are blocked with security mechanism. Thus, you need to bypass the restrictions that it has, and then you reach the raw OGNL that allows you to do anything. So, if you have the injection point and the way to bypass security mechanism, you have an RC in struts. Let's take a closer look at both of these components. Uh, there are two injection pipes, uh, single and double. Uh, the main difference between them that in single the user input is taken and evaluated right away. In double it's first evaluated and it's benign and the second evaluation is dangerous. But they end in exploding the application. Uh, single injection. For example, it was used in Equifax breach. Have everybody heard about it? So, as you know, uh, struts 2 based application was exploited in order to get into Equifax network and steal hundreds of millions of records, uh, financial records of people. And this is the snippet where the OGNO expression from the payload was uh, evaluated. Parser.evaluate takes the expression and boom, you have the calc or any command that you like. That is the double evaluation. It's a bit harder, but it works the same way. First, it evaluates the user input this name. For the first time, it's in red. And for the second time, it takes the variable name here and evaluates it for the second time. And this time, it's evaluated and you can do mischief. Uh, it was fixed by uh, removing the second evaluation. This is the example of another struts vulnerability, not that popular as Equifax vulnerability, but the consequences were pretty much the same. After you know how injection points look like, let's go to the security bypass, the most fun part of this talk. Uh, first, uh, in further examples, I use a uh, method get text as the OGNL injection point. Uh, originally, it's a method that allows you to get messages for localization. So if you have several languages in your application, you put a message and the application knows which language it should use, which language message in which language it should serve you. But it has an interesting feature. If it doesn't find the message, it evaluates the input as OGNL expression. Is it the way it should work? Yeah. So that is exactly what I should do. I feed the payload, it doesn't find anything, and I have the, uh, my expression evaluated. Even in the security documentation of struts, they write that you must not put user input inside get text because it will be evaluated. So that is exactly, that is exactly what I do. So let's start with first payload. It's not actually the first, but the first interesting payload. It's from 2013, and it's pretty short. What it does, it turns off the security mechanism first, and then it runs a command. So uh, at that point, security mechanism had a single feature that allowed it to uh, restrict OGNL. It disallowed static calls. So I cannot call a static method because the security mechanism doesn't let me. But I can access security mechanism through OGNL. This is the security mechanism member access. And turn allow static method access to true. Now I can call static method because I've just changed it. So I then run the command. Let's take a look how it works. Boom, calc. The same year, it was fixed. So what developers did, they made static, allow static method access immutable and I cannot change it anymore. But what if, instead of calling a static method, now I 
uh, create a dynamic constructor, a use dynamic constructor for, let's say, process builder that you have seen before. And suddenly, Strat security mechanism allows it. So we'll have a new calc popping for this payload. This issue was fixed next year. And what developers did, they uh, restricted OGNL from using arbitrary constructors. And it's one the important part of the security mechanism now. They've added blacklist. As you know, blacklist are blacklist is a flawed approach to security, and you all see why. There is an X payload because there is a way to bypass security mechanism, and now uh, what researchers did, instead of taking static method, they took a static object. It's default member access. Default member access is a default state of the security mechanism that has zero security inside. So they assigned the default member access to the current member access. Now we have zero security and we can run calc. Boom. Again, it was fixed in 2016 already. And what developers did, they finally, they finally removed access to the security mechanism from OGNL. And also, they have added default member access to the blacklist. So how do you think? Is that it? Of course not. The next payload, that is actually the payload that was used for Equifax, uh, as you can see, it uses the same construction in the end, but it's slightly longer. Uh, so in the beginning, through several calls, using several objects in the value stack, it goes to OGNL util class. And OGNL util class has a wonderful feature of flushing blacklist. So we reach the OGNL util, we flush blacklist, and we are free to go. We run a calc. Boom. It looks so funny retrospectively, but if you are a Struts developer, they just didn't think about it. It was fixed in 2017. What developers did, they removed contacts from like, being accessible through OGNL, and they now we cannot flush blacklist using dot clear method. Is that it? No. There's a new payload. It's slightly longer, but it does the same. Also, it's divided in two consequent requests. Uh, first, uh, the payload gets the context object through other objects in the value stack, because value stack is a mess, and it was not clear for developers in the beginning, I guess, that you can reach the necessary object several ways. So they removed context from OGNL, but there's a way to get the context object the other way through struts.valuestack in the attributes. Also, uh, it's occurred that blacklists are not that immutable as developers thought, and you can use a setter to set blacklist to an empty list, and then you have empty blacklists. So let's take a look how these payloads work. I've used the original injection point that was used uh, by the security researchers who found this CV. Uh, and injection point is in, in the code that handles URLs. So first, I'll show you uh, how to check if the application is vulnerable. We put a OGNL expression inside the URL, and if we see the result of it, that means that application is vulnerable. As you can see, the multiplication result is in the URL, so we can now exploit it. First, what we do, we send the first payload that cleans the blacklists. They are empty now, and we are free to pop up a calc. So how do you think? Is that it? Yes, but no. Uh, there are no CVEs that we know in struts anymore, and there are no public exploits that we know, but is that it? I guess not. Let me show you why. 
is not safe, not so fast. Uh, I've taken two actions and the video on the right side. The first action uh, creates a user object and as default user has is admin equal to false. Then this action saves this user object to session. Session is used to drag objects between actions. So if you call several actions in a row, they share the same objects. So I call user example action and my user is admin is equal to false. The second action, user inject, uh, first it takes the user from the session, then it evaluates the OJNO expression. Of course, in real life, the uh, injection point won't be that easy as get text, but this is the example. And then it puts the user back to the session. So what I do, I write the OJNO expression user dot is admin equal to true. And I change the is admin value of this user object to true. And as you can see, it has changed now user is admin. And then it was saved to the session that is used by different action. And if I again call this user inject action, you can see that this value doesn't change because user is admin and nothing changed to false. So what does that mean? That means that struts is broken from its core. The architectural decisions made a long time ago, people didn't think that it may lead to these drastic consequences. Uh, nevertheless, we do not have RCE right now, known RCE, but we can manipulate the business logic of the application, we can manipulate the authorization, and other security checks by injecting OG now expressions in the application. And it's not that hard to have uh, the OG now sync in your application. Currently, there are no known uh, syncs in Struts code, but it's relatively easy to introduce a new one for developer because developers tend to play with things that do not understand completely, so they use struts uh, internals that they should not and use them in their code, like get text. Well, the developer read the documentation to the security part? I guess no, so he'll use get text, put an input, boom. You'll have the OJNO injection in the application. So there are several things I want to take home. If you are planning or your team or your company is planning to use struts, you probably shouldn't because you have seen what it may lead to and you have always vulnerable framework. Well, at least they fixed the core of Struts framework. It will be vulnerable until that moment. So do not use it probably. If you're among that happy security people who work with Struts apps that are that stuck on the production and you cannot get rid of them, Try to get rid of them, but I know it's impossible, so there are two things you should do. First, you should install patches and updates as soon as you see them, especially if they are security related, and use a uh, static analysis tool like check marks uh, to find no general injections and syncs. But remember, no matter how secure your app is, the, your framework can always stab you in the back. And the last thing, if you are a security researcher, then you should take two components, the injection point and the bypass of the security mechanism in order to have a CVE. If you have both of them, you're good to go, you have a new CVE. So that's it, thank you for your attention. I don't love Twitter, so I've put my corp email and LinkedIn here. Uh, I'm open to your questions after the talk or you can reach me online Thank you for your attention.